In this lesson, we're going to explore the high yield exam question, which relates to explaining and identifying the hormones in this graph here. This is a collection of hormones and their changes over the female reproductive cycle. And in your trials and HSC exams, it often commonly comes up because it's very difficult for students to understand and it tests your basic conceptual knowledge of female reproduction. Let's break down this graph and its key features. And you can actually understand this very easily simply from remembering this feedback loop here. We've already discussed this feedback loop in an earlier video, but to very quickly recap, the hypothalamus and pituitary are two structures in the center of the brain. The hypothalamus releases GnRH, which stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. That is going to go and act on the anterior pituitary and cause the release of two hormones, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. They will then travel deep in the blood all the way to the ovaries where they increase the production of estrogen and progesterone, which is an androgen, in the follicle of the ovary, which is then released. Great, so now let's start with the beginning here. Now day one of the 28 day female reproductive cycle is marked by the first day of menstruation. Now remember, the reason menstruation happens is because in the last menstrual cycle, we had a sudden drop in progesterone, which is orange here, and your estrogen, which is blue here. The sudden drop in estrogen and progesterone decreased the blood supply to the uterine lining, known as the endometrium, and it causes shedding. And you can see that here. The uterine lining is shown in blue. And there happens to be a shedding that happens due to the drop in estrogen and progesterone. The first day of shedding and bleeding is known as the first day of the entire next reproductive cycle. Now, what you should note is that estrogen seems to be slowly increasing. And this makes sense because the hypothalamus is producing a hormone that's going to the anterior pituitary to release another hormone, which is then going all the way to the ovary to release estrogen. And since the top two hormones are constantly being released, you end up with a buildup of estrogen. And you should be able to see that here. Now, estrogen peaks right before day 14. And when it peaks to such a high level, it actually goes back to the brain and it increases the production of GnRH, FSH, and LH. You should be able to see the yellow LH surging at day 14. Also, the surge in FSH at day 14. This response where a hormone is increasing the release of other two hormones is known as positive feedback. Now important to note, LH is what causes ovulation. This is a very common exam MCQ question that comes up. Now what happens next depends on whether implantation occurs. Now in a normal reproductive cycle, we have no implantation and we have no release of beta HCG. Now remember, beta HCG is the hormone responsible for keeping the corpus luteum functional. If we have no implantation, we don't have this hormone and the corpus luteum will degenerate into a scar tissue known as the corpus albicans. And you should also know the corpus luteum is responsible for the secretion of estrogen and progesterone. So in a normal reproductive cycle where you have no implantation, and thus no release of beta-HCG, 
you will have the corpus albicans forming and hence a decrease in estrogen and a decrease in progesterone. That is simply because the corpus luteum releases estrogen and progesterone and it can't when it's formed into a dark scar tissue known as the corpus albicans. Can you see the drop in progesterone and the drop in estrogen here? This is because no implantation occurred. And it is the drop in estrogen and progesterone which will decrease the uterine lining and eventually cause bleeding. And day one of menstruation will mark the next menstrual cycle. So to sum it all up, the way you approach this graph is you should note that estrogen will slowly increase till about day 14. And then it suddenly causes positive feedback and an increase in LH and FSH. And you should be able to identify those two hormones. Now LH, you should remember, is responsible for ovulation. And since implantation doesn't normally occur, you don't have release of beta HCG and you will thus see a drop in estrogen and progesterone. And that will mark the next reproductive cycle. And that's a conclusion of a very high yield question, which is explaining and identifying the components of this reproductive hormone graph.